Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the mini school, and today is the fourth and last lecture uh, of the mini school on uh, the introduct introduction of programming uh, with Python with uh, applications in, um, in, in in data science. Yeah, and um, and Professor uh, Rajaratnam. Uh, is here with us again, so I, do, I don't need to introduce him to you uh, again. You already practiced his uh, uh, his efforts a, a few times this uh, uh, this month. So, Kancho, I know you have always a uh, lot of material to share with our participants, so I will I won't stand in the in the way. So, and uh, if you would like to um, to start sharing your screen and begin with your presentation. Uh, you're, you're most and welcome. Yeah? And as usual, uh, Ilya and myself will keep an eye on the on the questions. And if there is something urgent, <laughs> we, will, we will stop you <laughs> on the spot. And otherwise, we will uh, we will keep them for for the end. Yeah. And please, participants, make use of the Q and A facility uh, to ask uh, to ask questions. Okay, Kancho. Thanks, Francesco. What, what to uh, you? Thanks a lot. Um, okay. So last week we did some plotting. Uh, I'm going to round off today's lecture with, or today's mini school with uh, just, uh, you know, doing some simulation. And, and I thought it'll be quite interesting to see, uh, you know, how simulations are run or basic simulations are run on, on Python. So I'm going to my usual folder where I saved all my material. Um, and that's where I always open up um, uh, Python. Okay, so okay, so here is Python. I've opened up Python, and now I'm going to. I'm just getting to my Word document where I saved everything uh, that I wanted to do. Okay, so um, okay, so I, as always, I import. Uh, you know, uh, I import all the different libraries. So I'm going to import data science, or from data science import star, import numpy as np, import tkinter, import matplotlib as plt, import matplotlib matplot the use TKA GG. Okay. Right. So before we start with some of the simulations, I wanted to go through some, you know, some uh, comparison statements, right? So, you know, we had done something like this before where we would say A equals to 10 and that would allocate the value of 10 to A. And if I wanted to allocate five to B, I would say B is equal to five. And then I could always add up A and B, and that would give me 15, right? But what about if you want to compare two numbers, right? So um, let's say it, I want to write 10 is greater than three. We know that to be true. And Python will tell you uh, will, uh, that it is true, right? And if I write something, if I write the opposite, 10 is less than three, Python will tell me it, that, it's, that statement is false. Right. So these these uh, statements become quite important when you're comparing two variables or an array to a variable or two entities, two variables essentially, right? Um, so let's do uh, a comparison. And 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 when I said a equal to five or a equals to ten, I'm allocating five to a, right? But if I do a less than seven, I'm comparing a to seven and I'm asking, is it true that A is less than seven? And since A is equal to five, uh, five is less than seven. So the output would be true. And I could do something like A is less than B. It'll give me false. I could do A is less than A plus B and that gives me true. So I can put in, you know, variables na names inside it, inside the comparison as well, right? What if I want to compare if two numbers are equal to each other? If I say A, remember, uh, remember A is equal to, uh, or let me say A is equal to 10 and B is equal to five. 
So when I, a statement like B equals to five, it takes whatever is on the right-hand side and it allocates to the variable on the left-hand side, right? So it allocates five to B, so therefore B is equal to five. Now, if I say A is equal to B, it's not comparing A and B, it will allocate the value of B to A and, and A was equal to 10 and B is equal to five. And because I allocated the value of B to A as my third step, A would equal to five now, right? So we know one equal sign means it, it, it allocates the whatsoever's on the right-hand side to the variable on the left-hand side. If we want to compare two numbers to see if they're equal to each other, we will say, let's say, we will say A equal equal B. When there's the double equal sign, it compares what is on the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and it asks the question, are, are they equal? And in this case, because A is equal to five now and B is equal to five, a is equal to B, therefore it gives you true. So comparison requires two equal signs, right? So let's create a number where A is equal to 10, B is equal to let's say five. And if I say A equals equals B, now you know A is not equal to B and therefore it gives you false. And if I want to ask the question, is A not equal to B? Of course, A is not equal to B at the moment because A is equal to 10 and B is equal to five. Therefore, this statement is true. It'll give me the answer. Uh, it'll output true to me, right? Uh, we can also compare arrays or elements in an array. So I'm going to create an array. Let's call the array A, np.a arrange nine creates an, uh, an array from zero to one less than nine, right? So, so it creates an array from zero to eight. Now, if I ask the question A is greater than five, what it does is it'll compare each element of the array to five. So we know zero is not greater than five, so it gives you an answer false. We know one is not greater than five, so it gives you an answer false, et cetera, et cetera, until it gets to six is greater than five, and it gives you an answer true. Seven is greater than five, the answer is true, et cetera, right? So if I had to create another array, for example, A equals make array 10 comma five, so it's like all sorts of, you know, almost random numbers. And then if I say A is greater than five, you can compare this, the, the top above where I created the array A to the answers here. So if 10 is greater than five, five is not greater than five, therefore it's false. Three is greater than, uh, three is not greater than five, therefore it's false. Seven and eight are greater than five, therefore it's true. I can also write A equals, greater than or equals to five. And then it'll give me true, true, false, true, true, because five is equal to five, therefore that changes. Right? And I can also compare if A equals to five, in this case, it will compare every element of A to five and it will tell me that only the second element is equal to five, the rest are not equal to five. And, and, and this is quite useful when we want to compare large uh, array of numbers to, uh, to a singular value or something to that effect, right? Now, if you look at A equals, equals five, it outputs an array that says false, true, false, 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 right? Um, and actually, uh, let me do a greater than five. So it gives me true, false, false, true, true, right? So the output is an array. I can actually allocate this to another variable, right? So I can have the output allocated to, let's say, variable B. And the way to do that is B equals A greater than five. And therefore, if I write B, you can see B is equal to true, false, false, true, true. Now, these true and false are Boolean numbers, right? So they either stand, they're binary numbers, they stand for one or for zero in this case, right? So true is always allocated one and false is always allocated two. So if I count, if I sum up the truths, uh, some of the numbers here, every number that is true, every uh, element that is, is true will become one, every element that is false become zero. Uh, and therefore you could sum up the, if you say sum of B, it sums up the number of true in that array B, right? Um, I see there's some questions in the chat room. I'm just gonna check the chat room. Okay, that's the Nithex YouTube. I hope you 
can get lost them throughout YouTube. Okay, can you get lost. Uh, thanks, Ilya. Uh, okay, so so essentially by summing up B, I'm converting all the true because true is equal to one and false equal to zero. So if I sum up the uh, the array B, all I'm doing is counting the number of true in that array, right? Um, uh, okay, so that is the first thing I wanted to do. Well, I've jumped ahead in my slide, in my uh, word. Uh, okay, the second thing I wanted to do, so the first thing which we did was comparing two variables or two numbers, an array to a number, etc., And then also counting the number of, of truths in, 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 in an array, right? The second thing I want to do is to append array. So I'm creating an array. Let's call the array first, right? And this array is just numbers from zero to three, right? And if I uh, create another array, 10 comma 17, uh, and then I say, what is this? This array is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So it starts from 10 and goes to one below 17. Right? So the, I have two arrays. Now let's say this first array uh, has four elements, zero, one, two, three, right? Let's say I wanted to add another element to this, this array. And the way I would do that is I would say NP uh, is for NumPy, append, in other words, go to the array, first and add whatever you want to the array. So it, in this case, I'm telling you to create a fifth element or fifth cell in this array, and that cell must equal six, right? So there you see zero, one, two, three, six. When I wrote np.append uh, first comma six, I just asked it to output to me. I didn't ask you to save it under the array first. So you still have the original array that is zero, one, two, three. If I wanted to save it or uh, save it with the, uh, the extra element, then I would have to say np.append, first equals np.append, um, comma six. In other words, append six to the array first and so, uh, save it under uh, the array uh, named also first, right? So if I do this and write first, you'll see it has the extra element in it. I can also append two arrays together. So remember my array uh, first, which goes from zero, one, two, three, one, two, three, six now, and my second array, which goes from 10 to 16. So if I do that, I get uh, the first five digits being from the first arrays and the rest of the digits being from the second array. Right? I could also say np.append second comma first, which is now gives me the second array first, uh, second array in the first few positions, and then the uh, first array in the in the last position. Right. Okay. So this appending arrays is important because if you wanted to run a simulation and you wanted to add results in an array format, you would just append new results as you go along by creating new cell to an uh, to an array and inputting the values into that cell. Okay, so we did two things now. Uh, one is to, uh, comparing variables and the other one is to append arrays. Now I want to do just a uniform uh, distribution example. Uh, let's choose a coin toss as an example, right? So I want to toss a coin and you could either get heads or tails, right? And so how can we toss, how can we get uh, Python to toss a coin and, uh, and output a result? First of all, you've got to create an array that gives that lists all the possible outcomes in your simulation, right? So in this case, there are there are two outcomes. One is uh, heads and one is tails, um, and they're the only two outcomes, and they're equally likely. Uh, so I create an array uh, with um, you know, using make array, which we did in previous uh, mini school lectures. And I, I allocate it to an array called coin, right? So this coin has both heads and tails. Now, if I say coin, you see it's an array with heads and tails as the elements. Now, if I wanted to randomly choose one of these elements from this array, I would say np.random.choice. Uh, and then I will input the array from which I wanted to choose. So in other words, 
choose from uh, choose randomly uh, using uh, from the library numpy from the um, from the array coin and choose any elements with equal likely like likelihood right so if i or equal probability so if i click enter it would either choose or heads or tails because there are only two elements in that array and it would give me one of them right uh, what about if we do a dice so dice has six sides array one two three four five six uh, Right. Um, uh, and then I could say np.random.choice dice. It would choose one of the elements of of the of the array dice and and output it to me. And in this case, it's four. Right. Um, okay. Um, so what about? So I'm going back to the coin example. Uh, let me just see what's in the chat to make array. Uh, I think it's data science. So you'd have to say um, that import, what do you call it? Um, what did I write there? No, I've forgotten what I wrote there. From data science import star. Thank you. Um, okay, so I now, uh, so here I am, and every time I run this, I'm actually throwing another dice, right? Or I'm simulating another dice. Uh, when I did the coin, I was simulating another output of uh, of a coin. Um, okay, what if I didn't want to just uh, simulate one coin toss? If I wanted to simulate ten coin toss, all I would do is np dot random dot choice from the array coin give me ten outputs. In other words, uh, run this ten times and tell me. What the results are from ten coin tosses, right? So, in other words, go to the array coin, choose one of the elements randomly, but do that ten times and bring a result, bring out the results, and that tells me that it has um, it has uh, tossed this coin ten times, and I got tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails. Right. So that's the that's an easy way to run. Uh, a uniform discrete, uh, you know, random variable quite easily where you know the output. In our case, the output was uh, heads and tails, and I could run it multiple times. Um, but let's, let's run this and allocate it to a, a variable, right? So I'm going to allocate this coin toss, 10 coin tosses, uh, to an array called results. So if I write results, I get a different answer from previously. But the nice thing is anytime I do results, it's the same answer because I've only allocated to it once, right? Now I want to count the number of heads that are in this uh, uh, array. I could do something like this, right? A equals results. And let's say I want to uh, count the number of heads so I could compare it to heads. Right. So actually, let's do. Let me do this. So what happens if I compare results to heads? I'll get the first element is true, the second element is true, the third element is is the tail, so therefore it's not equal to heads. Therefore the answer is false. The, um, then the uh, fourth element is false. Then fifth element is true. Sixth element is true. Seventh element is true, etc., etc. Or yeah, false, etc., etc., etc. Right. So. If I, if I compare results to heads, then I will know which one of those are true and which ones are false. Now, if I go and put a sum around it, which we did earlier, it counts the number of trues in, that, in, the, in the array, in the, in the bracket, right? So the results equals equals heads would give, you, um, would give you an array. And if I put a sum around it, it'll count the number of times as true. So if I do that, it tells me I got five heads out of 10. Uh, yeah, well, we knew it was 10 coin tosses. And I know, I know by summing it up, I got five uh, heads. So instead of saying this, let me do this, right? Let me toss the coin 10 times every time. Instead of saving it under results, I could just say np random dot choice coin got a 10. So this part that I'm highlighting creates uh, 10 uh, coin tosses, right? Then the part in the bracket 
compares those 10 coin tosses to heads and tells me if it's true or false in a new array. And the sum that I put around it sums up the number of heads there are, number of trues there are in, 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 in the array. And we know every time there's a true, there was a head that was a result of a coin toss. So if I press enter here, it tells me there were four um, heads in that random uh, sampling, right? Sir, can so you? Yeah. I think uh, students are complaining that you're moving a little bit too fast. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, so where should I go back a little bit? Would one of the students tell us? I don't know, they need to type in the Q&A okay. or, or in, when they will type, I will let you know. Okay, cool, okay. Thank you. So if you don't understand anything I've talked about earlier, just give me a heads up quickly and I'll, I'll go uh, explain that, right? So there are important parts here that I've done. I've created an array called coin. Let me just show you what coin looks like. Coin is an array which has got heads and tails as its elements, right? Then I use NP random choice coin comma 10, which creates 10 uh, instances of uh, coin tosses. Um, and then I compared it here to heads. And, and, if it, if, and that will uh, create an array for every element in, 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 the, in the comparison array where it's uh, heads, it'll give me a true. And where it's tails, it'll give me a false. And then if I put a sum around it, uh, it would then count the number of trues, which is the same as the number of heads. Uh, and so if I keep on running this, I'm essentially uh, uh, tossing a coin uh, 10 times and counting the number of heads, right? So I got a very unlikely answer there, which was eight. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's less likely to get eight than uh, let's say four heads out of 10 uh, coin tosses, right? Okay, sorry, Kendrick, could you please move your lowest lane a little bit higher? Okay. Perfect, thank you. Cool, thanks. Um, okay, so what do I want to do next? If I wanted to count the number of tails, I would do that, right? So it, it would, I would get the random 10, uh, 10 coin tosses, and then I would compare each element of that array to tails, and that will give me whether it's true or false, and then it would sum up all the true, uh, which is the same as the number of tails, and in this case, out of 10, uh, coin tosses, I got two tails and obviously then it would be eight heads. Right. Okay, uh, let me see what do I want to go into next. Right. Okay, what if I want to do something different, right? So let's say I wanted to toss uh, 10 coins and let's call each of those 10 uh, tosses a game, right? Um, and and I want to play this hundred times. Right? One way to do that is for me to uh, create a for loop, right? And this is where np uh, sorry the append function becomes useful, right? Remember the append function where at, um, first uh, which was an array, uh, second which was an array that I had created earlier, and if I say n np append first comma second, uh, then I have the two arrays appended in the same order as what I had put in the brackets. Right. So now what I want to do is I want to toss 10 coins and I want to count the number of heads in that uh, 10 uh, coin tosses, but I want to repeat this 100 times, right? And so I want to create an array of uh, 100 elements each element indicating 10 uh, coin tosses and the count of the heads in each of those 10 uh, coin tosses. Right. So first I have to create an empty array. So let's do that. Results equals make array, open bracket, close bracket, creates an empty array. There's no elements in it for now. And one way to you know uh, append, um, so what I could do is I could, append to results, right? NP append to results. And then I could run this um, 
10 experiments, uh, 10 coin tosses um, multiple times, right? So it'll be np.random.choice coin comma 10 uh, equals head. I, I don't have enough brackets. I hope I do. Okay. So now I had an empty array and now I have an array with four as the first element because I did an experiment where I tossed uh, 10 coins and looked at the number of heads and added as and I counted the number of heads and added that result to this array. Now, if I run that again, where I say results equals that, I take the new array that is results that I've got one element and will add another element to it, right? And if I write results, I have five. So in the first experiment out of 10, uh, coin tosses, I had four heads. In the second experiments where I had 10 coin tosses, I had five heads, right? And I could keep on doing this. If I wanted to do this 100 times, I will obviously have to do this 100 times. So there must be easier way to get a Python to repeat a command 100 times, right? And the way to do that is as follows. So I'm going to uh, reinitialize the results array. so that uh, there's nothing in it. So there's no elements in that array, right? And I could use something called a for loop, right? So let's do that. For i is i in np dot arrange 100. So what does this do? The np arrange 100 creates an array from zero to 99, right? And what i does is it takes on every single value uh, in, um, in, um, in, in, in each cell of the, of the array, right? And, and it takes the first value and it runs whatever is below the full statement, right? Uh, and then it takes the second value of the, or the value of the second element and runs whatever is in the full statement. So in order for a Python to identify what's in the full statement, I have to in, intend, indent it, right? So I have to give it some spaces. And so I'm going to write a results, which is, you know, we created the empty array called results. And then I'm going to append to it uh, uh, what we did earlier, which was, um, you know, uh, running uh, 10 uh, coin tosses and counting up the number of heads in that. Uh, let me make the data. No, okay. And 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 if I if I if I click enter here, and if I look at results now, you'll see it's got hundred elements, right? So it, it, it the for loops allows it to run multiple times. And each time it ran it, it appended something new to the existing array, right? Um, I guess what would be useful is for you to, to see what an example of a for loop might look like, right? So this is what for loop does. Maybe I should have done that one. For i in, so do you remember what np.arrange5 is? It's just a, uh, uh, an array from zero to four, right? So it goes from zero to one less than five. So if I say for i in uh, np dot arrange five, right? And then I ask it to, after indenting it, I say print i, um, and then I enter. What it does, it does is we know the np arrange five is go, is an array, an array from zero to four, so zero, one, two, three, four. So what I do, what for loop does is it, it, if it takes I and allocates the value that is found in the first cell or, or first element of the array, right? The first element of the array is zero. Now I is equal to zero. Then I tell it print I. So it will print zero because I is equal to zero. Once it's done that, it goes back to the top. And now it takes the second value in or the value of the second element in that array. So uh, the second element is equal to one. So now i is equal to one. And if I tell it to print i, it will print one. Right. 
Now, if done that, it can, it goes to the uh, it goes back to the top, and it, it takes in the third element. So now i is equal to two. It prints i, which is equal to two. Then it goes to i is equal to three. It prints i. Uh, and therefore it prints out three to the, uh, to the output. And then I is equal to four, it prints out um, four, and then it goes back to the top and it sees, oh, there's no more elements in that array, right? And so it comes out of the for loop. So it stops going, repeating whatever is in the for loop. We call this a for loop, right? So it allows us to do something multiple times. So let's do one where we want to count from one to 50 and print it out to the screen. And you can see um, the output, oh, sorry, the output goes from one to 50 um, once I find it, there you go, right? Or once to 49 or zero to 49 because it's an array from one to, uh, array of 50, so it'll go from zero to 49. But the point is it will it'll, it'll repeat whatever is in that um, elements, that number, or, I mean, in the array, uh, as much as the number of elements in that array or the size of that array. Uh, so let's go back to the uh, coin, uh, coin tosses. So I want to create an empty array, right? Results equal to make array. And then I'm, I want to, let's say, run a coin toss multiple times. And I might say for i equals np dot range. Let's say I want to uh, uh, toss a coin. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It should be for in. Um, I'm used to MATLAB or something else. Um, so it, I want to run this 100 times. Uh, let's say a coin toss. Uh, I could say then um, uh, results equals and append to the results. Results dot uh, np dot random dot choice and coin. Remember coin was a, a array which just had heads and tails in it. Um, and then I come out, I made a mistake somewhere. So MP range, I don't know why that is giving me an error now. Oh, no, I'm not sure why it's giving me an error. Oh, okay, I know why, okay. So I had a full stop here instead of a comma, right? Then I come out of it and what does what it does is whatever is in the for loop, which is whatever is indented, it will repeat it 100 times. So let's see, it, what it did was it went to I, took on the first value of, of the first value of the element or the value of the first element in the array, right? Which is equal to zero. And then it ran this code here, right? And it, it tossed a coin and let's say the answer was heads. It would then append that result to heads, to, to, to the array results, right? And then it would go to the top again and it will take on the value of the second element of the uh, array. And then it will run whatever is in the for loop again and again, right? So if I now look at what is the results of uh, the 100 uh, coin tosses, it would look like this, right? So it, it is, uh, it's, it's got uh, heads, tails, tails, all randomly chosen every time I uh, tossed a coin uh, and, and there are a hundred uh, tosses. So you'll see hundreds of these, uh, hundred of these heads and tails together, right? So that's a simulation of a, of a, of a coin toss, right? Let me quickly see if there are any questions and then maybe answer it before I go to the next. What is coin defined it uh, defined it? So it's like a it's like a one rand coin, right? Uh, so one rand coin would be um, would be a coin, right? I don't know how else to say it. Right? So a coin is something that's got heads and the tails, uh, and generally it's got a monetary value. Right? Um, okay, then what is MP? Is it like a command? Is MP stands for NumPy? Yeah. Okay, great. Like getting an error. Let me see what is Rosa's error. Uh, Rose, uh, how do I go up? Rosa, did you? Uh, okay, Rosa, this also. Okay, 
you see where you have results equals MP append, the MP dot append, put some spaces in, 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 in front of it, right? So start again by typing for I, let me type it with you. All right, let me see. So you see what I'm doing, right? Uh, results equals make um, array, open bracket, close bracket, right? And then I'm, I'm saying for I in NP dot A range, 100 colon, right? Then I'm gonna put some space in front to indent it, right? And then results equals NP dot append. I'm just copying whatever Rosa had put in uh, her, 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 uh, her on the chat box. And between results and NP in here, you need a, a comma, not a full stop, right? Um, NP dot uh, random dot choice a coin equals heads uh, and it's a I think a two close brackets yes oh no uh, I have too many close brackets I think yeah I do have too many close brackets um, um I'm just going to take away one close brackets and then if I look at results uh, it gives me uh, it gives me one and zeros uh, because uh, you are adding uh, true and false, right? So in this case, it is coming out as one and zero. I wonder why it came out as one and zero um, instead of true and false. Um, but it, it's, it's the same thing anyway, right? Okay, I don't know why I'm getting one and zero, but uh, true is equal to one and false is equal to zero. So. It's, it's the same thing as uh, as previously. Sorry, right. you're getting ones and zeros because you don't sum up the results where you have a heads of, or, or, yes, kind of. So so, so, you... so this this here, the NP random coin should give me just a true or false, and that's what it should be appending. So this part here, should just give me, a, like it gives me a false. So I don't know why it's converting it now to a number. Uh, I would be surprised if it's due to the append command. It's maybe only working for the for the numerical arrays. Oh, but remember here it, it it worked earlier when I did it here. But you haven't been doing the ah okay okay yeah but you haven't been doing comparison maybe when it's doing comparison it's doing automatic oh sorry sorry yeah sorry you're right <laughs> so you're perfectly right so 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 here it's comparing right so if I take out the heads um, so let's do that again so let me clear clear the array here's the full loop and and and. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm just going to take out the comparison. It's just telling me the coin, uh, whether it's the heads or tails, right? Uh, thanks, Ilya. And then it gives me heads or tails. But if I do, of course, the comparison, um, and then it will give me zero, one, zero for, uh, zero for false, and one for true. So here I'm doing a comparison to heads. Uh, and then if I press enter, and then I put results, uh, it gives me zero, one. Etc. Right. Um, is yours working now, Rosa? Uh, so, so, so for matplotlib, we 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 did some array uh, in 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 the last one. Yeah, you'll use uh, histogram, but if you look at the last lecture videos, there are some uh, things there, right? Uh, Okay, so you wrote, did you define what coin is equal to? Right, so you'd have to, do, you, you, you need to define coin is equal to make array heads tails, right? Uh, so maybe you need to do that first, just to define a uh, coin, right? Okay, so, now this was a, this is you know between heads and tails it shows uh, uh, randomly between heads and tails with equal probability right so what if we wanted and we did this earlier where we did sorry np dot uh, dot um, random dot choice 
and we added dice and it chose a number between one and six six uh, randomly with equal probability because remember dice uh, was an array from one to six right um what about if we wanted to use normal distribution right instead of a uniform distribution so we wanted to sample from a normal distribution um so let's say our mean is equal to zero and our uh, the standard deviation is equal to one right uh, and the way I would generate a sample from this distribution from a normal distribution would be um, np dot random and so now choice you choose normal right and if you say mu dot sigma comma I think if you just say mu dot sigma it'll give you an answer it will sample from the standard normal distribution because your mean is zero and your sigma is one if you wanted to sample thousand times you would just write thousand and it'll give you thousand different samples um and let's see what else do i want to do there uh, and if i let's see if I, what happens if i if i've calculated the mean of um mean of the uh, sorry so now let's i want to sample thousand times and i want to store it under a array called s uh, and so I say s is equal to np dot random dot normal um, mu sigma and thousand as the inputs. And if I type s, it will output to the screen the thousand sampling from the normal standard normal random distribution, right? And of course, I don't need it to be a standard normal random distribution. I can put in a different value for um, uh, you know uh, mu and sigma, right? And that would that is now uh, the mere uh, sample from a normal distribution that is uh, centered around nine and standard deviation eleven. But I want to go back to this where I did the standard normal distribution, and if I then take the mean of s, right, it should be somewhat equal to zero because that was what our our. Uh, average was that we inputted mean that we mu that we inputted into the into the function right so this is a way to sample um, from a normal distribution but if you wanted to sum from a no, sample from a normal distribution and but you didn't want an array you wanted um, a, 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 a matrix you will write something like this right So what you're saying is create a sample from a normal random distribution with mu mean uh, with mu equals three, standard sigma equals 2.5 and output uh, to, a, to an array, uh, to, to a matrix, uh, two by four matrix where each element is one of these sampling uh, samples, right? So if I press, press enter, you see it's two by four matrix and each point is a sample from that distribution. Um, any questions at this point? Right. After this, I want to do a Monty Hall pie, Monty Hall problem, which I think is always interesting, and then I can always uh, ask it. Is it possible sometimes to consult after this? I have been trying to input Excel data as downloaded to my command form that direct from the previous, but cannot seem to be ruining it. I tried attempting everything from everything which we added together. The same session. So, so, so I have a solution for you. So, Dimakatsu, your your issue is you don't have. Um, you, you, I mean, your your is your Python working? Okay, Dimakatsu, just email me. Right. Uh, let me carry. Okay, your Python's working. Okay. Uh, secondly, do you have your Excel data as a CSV file? And do you have it in the right path? Do you, you know, do you, do you, do you give it the path that is where the the CSV file is located? Right. So, for example, I might say a equals table dot t read table, right? And then I need to give it a path, right? Uh, if we are not already in that path. So my path in on my computer is C users can shoot downloads NISEP 
data lec uh, and then let's say crown csv i hope there's a file called that i remember and i need to put um i need to put a single course around this right so if you're part if you don't have the right path it's not going to read so i don't have the right path i have i know it so i ha i have to put double slash uh, and now i might not be getting my path right maybe there is no uh, i don't i can't think of a name of one of my files let's see coin no uh okay but if you do something like this it should work uh, okay or cones let's see cones as a file why am I not reading? Okay, there for me it's little. Okay, I tried that method with the cons data sir, and it didn't work. Okay, so give me a shout and and let me see. Give me, send me, um, send me a what do you call it? A screenshot, right? Okay, okay. Now what I want to do is something called the Monty Hall problem, right? And the Monty Hall problem is is as follows, right? Um, and you have three doors, right? And let's say I am a, I'm a, I'm a game master, right? And I, I and you are a participant. Um, and and there are three doors. And behind one door is a, is a is a is a is a car. Uh, behind the other two doors are goats, right? G O A T S, right? And most people will assume will prefer a car to a goat, right? I taught this once, and somebody said to me. What if they prefer the goat? So we have to make it clear that you prefer this brand new car to a goat, right? So there are three doors. Behind any one of those doors is a car, and behind the other two doors are, are goats, right? And now I tell you to choose a door, right? And you can, first, let's assume you can win anything that is behind the uh, behind the door you choose, right? What is the what is the probability of you winning the car? Does anyone know? Right. So the question is, um, there are three doors, and behind each door uh, is an item. Behind one door would be a car, and behind the other two doors would be it would be uh, goats and you get to choose one door and you open that door and the chance you're getting that is one third, perfectly right. Um, and 33%, perfect, right? Okay, now you choose a door, right? You don't know what you've chosen, you haven't opened it. I choose, uh, 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 um, and I'm the game master, I open another door to reveal a goat, right? So you chose a door, let's say you chose door number one, it doesn't matter which door it is, you don't know what's behind it. I then open another door and I reveal a goat and now I tell you, do you want to keep the same door or do you want to change to another door, right? And really the, the question is, is whether you should now change the doors or keep the same door. If you keep the same door, you will get what is behind that door you had initially chosen. If you, cha if you change your door, you would get what's behind the door that, uh, that um, that you've chosen after you change, right? So this is called a Monty Hall problem, and 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 it's not it's not intuitive for most people why you should uh, why you should change the door. And in fact, there is, the answer is it's best for you to change the door when you're given that option, right? So we'll we'll do a simulation to figure out whether it's better to change the door or not. Has anybody here heard of the Monty Hall uh, Monty Hall problem? Okay. Yes. Cool. So uh, I know. Okay, great. At least one person hasn't heard it, which is good. Uh, let me just answer Karabo's question quickly. How do you get out of uh, the loop to go back to the command line? Um, okay. So I I think uh, you might be you might have an error in your in in your in your uh, when you type uh, uh, let's say the for loop, uh, and and that's why you're not coming out of it. Um, uh, if uh, let me just write a for loop quickly to show you what it should look like. Um, so let's see, where's my okay? The, uh, all my windows are hidden. Sorry. Uh, okay. So 
if I write four I in let's say a n p dot a range a range five. Oh man, what did I do wrong? Oh, and I need a colon after that. And then I give it some space. I must give it some space. And then I say print I, right? And if I press enter, it gives me another chance to put in indent uh, stuff and, and press uh, and, and go with what's in the for loop or I can get out of the for loop by just by pressing exit, by pressing enter and it exits out of the inner for loop, right? So you might have typed something that doesn't let you exit out of it. I'm not sure. Try putting in a, a close bracket. Very often people make mistakes by not putting in a close bracket. When I say very often, I mean, I made that mistake earlier today. Right. Um, okay, so let me do the Monty Hall problem, right? So, so where is my file? Where is my command prompt? I guess you can see my command prompt. I can't see it quite easily. Um, uh, okay. So I'm just closing some windows, sorry, while I do this. Okay. So remember we imported all the files earlier, right? But in case you didn't import all the files, if you want, I will import them again so you can see uh, what files I, I'm using, right? Our libraries, sorry, not files. So from data science, import da, import num pi as np, import t, and, uh, and the reason why I'm putting that is because I want to plot later, matplotlib.pi plot as plt, import um, matplot, uh, some of these things that might be redundant, uh, matplotlib.use tkagg, okay, right. First of all, I want to make an array, right? Uh, and uh, let's say it's, 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 it's an array called doors. Make uh, array car first goat, second goat, right? So if I say doors, it's an array of three elements, the first element being car, the second element being first code, the second element being second code. Or the, yeah, the third element being second code. And then I create another array called goats equals uh, make array, right? Uh, and first code and second code, right? So this is an uh, array with two elements and the first element is first goat and the second element is a second goat, right? Now I want to define a function, right? Let's define a function called other goat. Right? Uh, and it takes in a value called a goat, right? And remember a function, to define a function, I write DEF space, the name of the function, and in brackets, all the inputs that goes into the function, right? And then I have to indent this if a goat equals, and I'm comparing it to first goat, right? Um, now I've got to further indent this. I wanted to return a second goat. I'll explain to you just now what this function is doing. I hope I don't make any spelling mistakes because then I have to write, run it again. Else if, Goat equals second goat, right? Um, yep. Oh, there I've made a mistake. Right. Uh, let's do this from <laughs> scratch again. Right. Uh, okay. That's first. A second. Uh, third. Uh, fourth is the else if this is where I made a mistake. I, oh man. Okay, I'm just going to type the whole thing in. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. Right. Okay, so what is this uh, function say? Right. 
So I'm defining a function called other goat, which takes in one input and the input is a goat, right? Inside the function, I have an if statement, right? If statement allows you to compare two things. And if that statement is true, then it must do whatever is below that statement or in, in, inside that statement. And if it's not true, then it goes on to the next uh, uh, if statement, right? If there is another if statement. So here, it takes the input called a goat. And if that value of a goat is equal to first goat, right? Then it must return uh, uh, for this, uh, uh, as part of this function, the return variable would be equal to second goat. Else if, that's what E-L-I-F stand for, else if, a goat, which is the input, is equal to second goat, then return first goat. So why is this um, function useful, right? So let's say you choose a car, right? Oh, sorry, you choose a, a, a goat, right? Let's, you, let's say you choose the first goat. And you don't know you've chosen the first goat, but the door you chose has a first goat in it. Then, as the game master, I must reveal the second ghost, second goat, right? If you had chosen the second goat, then I must reveal the first goat. Remember, as a game master, I must always reveal a goat. If you chose a car, I will, I will either reveal the first or the second goat. If you chose one of the goats, I must reveal the other goat. So this function helps me re reveal one of the other goats. Right? So if I write other goat and I write first goat, the answer should be equal to second goat, right? There you go. And if I write second goat, the answer should be first goat, right? If I put in something else that doesn't make sense, like let's say Kanshu, it would return nothing, right? Because the function only returns if a goat is equal to first goat or a goat is equal to second goat. Now I'm gonna define the whole Mon uh, Monty Python function. And for this, I'm gonna copy and paste. Otherwise, I'm going to make a mistake, right? And then I'll explain the the function to you after that. Right. Uh, okay, so, right. so I'm defining a function called Monty Hall, which doesn't take any inputs, right? And 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 then we, the first com, uh, code or command in that function is allocating a random choice element from the from the array doors to contestant choice variable, right? So remember doors had three elements. It had, it had a car, first goat and second goat, right? So randomly you choose a door as a contestant, right? And, and behind that door would either be the be a car, first door or second, first goat or the second goat, but you don't know what's behind it. You just have chosen one, right? Uh, uh, but yeah, you don't know what's behind it. Now, if you choose, so now I go into an if uh, function. If what you choose is a first goat, then Monty will show you the second goat, right? And the door, and I'm Monty, right? That's the game master, right? Uh, I should call it Kanshu then, rather than Monty, I guess. Uh, and the remaining door, because you chose the first goat, Monty showed you the second goat, and the remaining door will be a car. Right? Else, well, if you didn't choose the first goat, let's say you chose the second goat. So else, if contestant choice is the second goat, right? then, well, you chose the second goat, so Monty must show you the first goat, right? And the remaining door will be a car. Well, you could have either chose the first goat, the second goat, or the car. So the last else if is what if you chose a car, right? So if you chose a car, then Monty will choose either the first goat or the second goat randomly. Remember, goats is an array with uh, uh, with either uh, with elements first goat and second goat. So Monty will then choose one of the goats, and the remaining door, which would be the other goat. It calls the other the function called other goat. And depending on one Monty chose, then you'll choose the other goat. So if Monty chose the first goat, then the remaining door would be the second goat. If Monty chose the second goat, the remaining door would be the first goat. Right. And then it would return all three values. The value that you chose randomly, what's behind that door, what Monty chose, 
and what the remaining dough is, right? So the contents of choice is the original choice. Monty's choice is the uh, dough that he opened and the remaining dough is the, is the uh, car or goat or the object behind the dough that is not open, right? So let me run this function, right? Monty Hall, open bracket, close bracket because there's no input to it, right? And you see what this is telling is gives you an array with three elements. The first element is the first code, which is what you chose initially because you chose the first code and Monty always reveals the second, uh, always reveals the code. He reveals the second code and the, th the, the, the um, uh, object behind the door that is not open is a car. Right? And I can run this many times and you'll see the answers changing every time. Uh, you could see in the last one I ran, you chose a car. Monty showed the second goat and the remaining door was the first goat. Et cetera, et cetera. And I could go on like this uh, many times, right? But now let's run this uh, example multiple times, right? So for me to run this example multiple times, and I want to insert into, into a table, right? Because every time I run it, I get out three outputs, uh, second goat, for, sorry, the, the, your choice, Monty's choice, and the remaining door, right? Uh, when I say your choice, I mean your original choice. So you originally chose the door and the object behind that door. Okay, so I'm going to create a table with the following uh, labels on top. So it's a table. I'm creating a table called games. Uh, and the first uh, column is going to be called guess, which is your guess, the door you chose and what's behind that door. The second column is revealed, is what Monty reveals to you. And the third column is remaining, which is what... Um, is behind the door that is not open, right? So if I write games, it's a new table with three headings. There's nothing in the table at the moment. I haven't populated it, right? Uh, what about if I write games.append, right? So I want to append to this uh, table uh, a, a result from Monty Hall, right? Remember, it was, oh, actually, let me, a result from Monty Hall looks like something like that, right? It has a, it's an array with three elements. And if I append that to this, it just becomes a new row in the table games, right? So let me press enter. And this is what the table looks like, games, right? So it's got the heading, the heading is guests revealed and remaining. And then the first row of the table is, uh, you, it shows that you, the participant or you chose the second goat, uh, Monty revealed the first goat and the and car is behind the third door. Um, let me do this 3,000 times. And for me to do this 3,000 times, I could keep on appending. Every time I append, you see there's a new row, right? That appears in the table. And that's quite tiring to keep on appending a new row, right? Uh, so let's make it easier and let's use a for loop, right? So let's start afresh. I'm going to start with creating the table again. And if you look at it, the table's got Nothing, I've deleted all the variables. Yeah, I named the in the columns, I've only got the column label now because I created the table with the uh, column label. Right. So I could now run a, um, a, a for loop, right? A dot range. Let's say I'm gonna run it 5,000 times. Right. And I remember I need the colon at the end. Then I need to indent this and then I say games.append. And I want to append every time to games this following thing. Monty, uh, Monty Hall, open bracket, close bracket. And remember this time I'm not writing games is equal to games.append. I'm just writing games.append. In a table, it just appends it and stores it under the same uh, table name, right? So I didn't have to say games is equal to games.append. I could just write games.append, right? And if I run this, if I press enter, it allows me another chance to write something in the for loop. But if I don't want to write something in the for loop, I can just press enter. Oh, I have made a mistake and I'm not sure what mistake I've made. Let's see what it is. Table object have no uh, range. Oh, sorry. So I think it's here. Uh, 
No. Uh, come on. Numpy dot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So I forgot to put a uh, numpy dot. Um, and then I write games dot append Monty whole uh, uh, close bracket. And it runs it 5,000 times and let it run. And the problem is I'm, I had, I'll, I'll put it to output to the screen, uh, but let it run that 5,000 times and let's see what it looks like. Okay. Um, I'm just, it's just running now. Oh, I closed that, sorry. I was trying to. Okay, it's finished running. And if you look at after it ran the last time, it got the 10 results and then it's got 4,990 rows. So if you don't believe me, I could just write guess again. Uh, let me just move the cursor up, the window up. Oh, I can't move it up. Can you see my whole screen? I'm typing guess now. Uh, why is it not, not guess? What is the name of this table? I forgot the name of the table now. It's called games, right? Games. Right. And you can see there are 10 rows and there's 4,990 rows that are omitted. In other words, just not uh, shown to the, um, shown to, uh, shown on the screen, right? Now I've run this uh, uh, many times. I want to group this, right? I want to group what is, let's say I want to group uh, the table by games.group by guess, right? Uh, and if I look at A, it tells me if the uh, A is, I grouped it by guess, which is the original guess by the participant, right? And if, if the participant chose the car, uh, car 1,645 times, the first goat 1,736 times, and the second goat 1,619 times. As you can see, it's round about equal, and we know the chance of choosing a car is one third. Uh, so in our simulation, we get about one third and I can work it out 1,645 divided by 5,000. It's about 3.329 uh, or 32.9%, which is approximately equal to 33.9, right? Okay. What about, so if you chose a dough and Monty reveals a dough and you keep your same dough, then the chance of you winning the car is one third, right? We just saw that. What about if you choose a dough, then Monty shows his dough, and then you choose, then you change your mind and you choose the dough that is still closed, right? Does that increase your chance of uh, getting the car, right? So let me repeat that again. You choose a dough, there could be a car or a goat behind it, then Monty will open another dough, right? You don't know what's behind your dough. Monty will open a, a door, which will reveal a goat. Now you have a chance to either keep your original door or change to the third door that hasn't been opened or the other door that hasn't been opened, right? And so that door we know is, we call it remaining. So let's now say, let's assume that you choose the remaining door, right? In other words, you change your mind and you choose the door that is not open, right? So, so not your original, you change your, you, not your original door, you go to the other door, right? So let's group by remaining, remaining, right? Uh, and if I look at that, it looks like the chance, if I choose the remaining dough, the chance of me getting the car is 3,355 out of 5,000, at least in my simulation, right? So 3,355 divided by 5,000 is about 66.6%. 60, uh, That's the answer I was looking for, about 67.1. And finally, I could plot this, right? Um, a, I call the table A, where I grouped it, and I could say A dot bar H, uh, or, and then remaining. There are two columns in, the, in this table, uh, and it will plot a bar, it will plot a um, horizontal bar graph. And then if I say, PLT dot show open bracket close bracket it then uh, uh, opens up a window for me and it it gives me the following graph right 
and this is the graph of, for the remain the count for the remaining column, which shows that um, if I had chosen the remaining column, I would uh, the chance of me winning the car improves increases drastically, right? In fact, the theoretical answer is two thirds, right? And the answer I'm getting is sixty seven point one percent. So the, the the idea of the Monty Python Monty whole game is that um, it's always best to change your door. Right? Uh, I'm going to stop there now. I don't have anything else to really show, right? Um, and maybe I'll ask take questions or we can close it up. Um, whatever you decide. Right? I see there are some questions. Sorry, can you can you please yeah. is change. So I can't hear you, Ilya. Come online again, and people want to see how. It's the last question in the chat. Okay, can you can you say that again? I I couldn't hear much. I don't know. If... Okay, okay. Can oh, you do you want me to define the game? Line? Is the last question in the chat? Yes, I think that's what Ilya means. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, okay. Ilya. You, you your voice came through in chunks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so so first let me define the game to you, right? Um, so the game is as follows. I'm just going to the chat window. Sorry, I can't find the chat window now. Um, so the, the game is as follows. Um, uh, the 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 uh, the you're talking about the Monty Python game, right? Monty Hole game, right? Not the uh, coin toss game, right? I'm assuming it's the Monty Hole game. So I'm a game host, and let's say my name is Monty Hall, right? There are three doors. Behind each door is an object, right? And the object can either be a goat or a car, right? Behind one of the door would be a goat, and behind two of the doors would be cars, and they randomly placed. So you could choose door number one, and you might find a car, or you might find a goat, right? That's the first thing. So you come along and you choose a, a, a door, right? And behind that door is something, you don't get to open that door. I, as Monty Python, or Monty Hall, I keep on saying Monty Python, as I, as Monty Hall, then open another door. Let's say you, you chose door two, I then open door one, and whatever door I open, I will always show you a goat, right? Now the question to you as a participant, is do you keep your original door or do you change to the other door that hasn't been opened? And you get to win whatever is behind the door you that you choose, right? So if you kept if you kept your original door, you, you and later when the game finishes, you get to um, you get the item the object behind that door. If you change over to the other door, and 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 when the game finishes, you get the object behind that door. George, does that make sense? Okay. Now, do you want me to just run the run the code, or let me just type? Uh, can you type there what you would like me to do in terms of? Please, can you go back where you run games? Okay, if they, if, I mean, if, if I've answered your question, that's fine. If I have, if I've still got to answer something else, let me know. Okay. Is there any other questions? What does AGG mean? I'm not sure actually, right? It just, I know it helps in, when I'm when I'm using the command prompt to uh, write the you know code, um, the it um, what what is the command for? command line to write the code? It helps in printing out of uh, creating a window of the of the graph. Right. Um, okay. Then is it possible to export this result in specific Excel format? For it for me it would be best way to use this tool. So I think you can do the following. Right. Um, if I say, 
something like uh, games. Okay, I think if I say games output dot txt, it it oh, no, it, that doesn't work. Um, sorry, there's a way to put it out to a table, but I just am not getting that now. Right. There is a way to put it out in a text file, which you can then import into um, import into a Excel spreadsheet. If you look at the end of last lecture, you I think I talk about it, right? Where you assign the game to the definition. Okay, so you want me to go through that function? I will do that. Can you please how one gets out of the loop? So I'm um, uh, try exit try exit or exit i'm not sure actually try exit uh, open bra bracket close bracket can you type something in oh there it is ilya's got there oh ilya's got the answer to exporting something to uh, excel spreadsheet thanks ilya so what is df what library is df i know df is just standard uh, for the data frame in the pandas oh I'm, okay I, I'm just saying in pandas it, it will be just two xls or two csv okay but you know kind of it's probably something very similar in this data science package but one just need to give a look into the yeah so kind of like uh, yeah i i mean i i yeah i'd have to go and check what it is but you know let's i mean i, I don't have a table okay it's fine um or you can just import pandas and do it in, it's in pandas right yeah Everything what you are talking about, you can do absolutely in the same way in pandas. It, and it's like a little bit of Googling and equivalent operations exists. Cool. Thank you for that. And Rosa, um, try exit or quit or stop. Uh, try stop actually. And let me know if that works. Let me try make a mistake and see how I could do this in np.a range 100. I don't know what I, uh, okay, no, it doesn't. I don't know how to make a mistake and it's not come out. It did happen to me earlier uh, and I just closed the whole thing, but uh, you could try stop. Uh, I'm just writing it there. Try stop, uh, quit, uh, quit or, or exit. I know if you write exit like that with the open bracket, close bracket, it just closes the whole window, I think. Uh, but try stop. Any other questions? There's one in Q&A. I have a small question in that my plot was showing, but after I attempted to rerun the plot, no longer capable of displaying as any information. So I had that error before. Uh, did you close your uh, plot? Uh, did you, uh, after I attempted to rerun the plot is no longer capable of displaying as any information as to why this is so. So this happened to me last week and I was trying to learn about it as I was doing it. Uh, but then it started working. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it, it does something to do with AGG. Right? Um, what happens if you close the uh, plot? And then you say plot show. Let's see what happens to me. Uh, for me, it's opening up. If I close it, um, yeah, it's opening up every time. Oh, okay. So, 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 uh, um, so, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't do that. So, yeah, let me write down the answer and answer. Type answer. Let me type the answer. So, if you did something like this, a dot bar h uh, remaining. Uh, plot show open then it will show and then if you say plot show show again it won't show because the plot show is for the command just above it so what you'd have to do so this won't work so what you'd have to do uh, is to say so plot, sorry can we cannot see your screen oh sorry <laughs> thank you for that uh, i'm not sure where i am into closing the um uh, oh, let me share. I wonder if I can share this ch chat screen. Okay. 
right. So I'm gonna sh actually just share, close the chat and do it here. Okay. So uh, let me just close my plot. Uh, my whole thing is okay. Okay. So if I write a dot bar h um, remaining, right? Uh, it plots it, but it doesn't show it. And then if I say plot dot show open bracket close bracket, it show uh, a window opens up for me. You probably can't see it. Or let me share my whole screen, and so you can uh, see it. Okay. So now you see I have a graph that open. If I close it. And I write plot plt dot show again. It won't open anything because that plt dot show is is to the line. It, it, it kind of it refers to the line above it. And because the line above it is not growing a graph, it doesn't uh, draw it again, right? So if I want to start, I mean, uh, to draw a graph to another window, I'd have to write the a bar h line again, right? Right. And there it does it. So you can't write plt.show twice, straight after each other. Did I answer your question? Uh, sorry, I, uh, I didn't. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. And you ran all the, you ran all the libraries that I had, right? Okay, so I'm not sure. That's the simple answer. Right. Sorry, I think if you Google it, you'll find it, right? So just Google, search on Google for um, oh, what do you call it, AGG error or something like that. Or Ilya's typing it out. Oh, there are more questions, sorry. Simulation. Oh, the code for the simulation is not on my thing anymore. I will show you this code just now. Um, it is displayed when you first display the graph, then I close the graph. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm hoping to see Ilya's solution so I could also... Um, um, I want to see what the answer is. Uh, okay, so let me show the code. You can't see the show code on my command screen, so I'm going to show it on a text file I have here. Uh, how do I now share? Oh, man, uh, share screen. Here's my text file. You can see parts of it here. Right. This is the important part. Okay, so firstly, I think you'd have to, I tried plot save fig and does return an error message. Okay. So I think you, you, you maybe you, uh, you can, Google some Google to see how to keep the graph. Oh, when Ilya, when you answer, I can't see the answer. So Ilya, tell, can you also tell me what how to get it? Uh, the question is what what error? Because like in the save figure, you need to write the name of the file and the path of the file when you need to send save it. Oh, okay. So you, so so uh, so you have to do the path uh, when you save the figure. That's true. Thank yeah, save figure, figure. And I don't know what. Zero zero one PNG or JPEG or whatever. I think yeah yeah I've seen that before PNG. I think if you look at the last lecture, I did save a graph. So look at how I saved the graph there, and maybe you can use that now with save fig. Uh, I'm just looking at um, any other answer, uh, clearing the answers that we might have answered. So Vasily, I've cleared your answers only because I think you need to check the last lecture to uh, see what the, um, how to save it as a figure. Uh, so, 
okay, so all this uh, I think has answers to it. Uh, show. Okay. Uh, okay, I think everything has got an answer to it. So, is there anything else? If not, that's it. Okay, <clears throat> Kancho, thank you very much. It looks like. Um... There are no, ah, there is maybe one more question. I ah, know, it's probably just a thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a thank you and uh, Pierre who got it. <laughs> so Kancho, thank you very much um, for, for, for spending so much time this month uh, with us. And uh, uh, I think you made uh, hundreds of, uh, of people uh, new enthusiasts for for Python. Yeah, so thank you, thank you very much. And uh, you know, as the, the the as the participants will find out, the only way to learn it is to practice it. Yeah. So just uh, just try to implement whatever comes up to your mind in Python, and uh, sooner rather than later, you will be experts. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. That's, that's the only way. Uh, could I make one announcement? Please, can you? Cool. So, so, so in July, uh, I think it's the second or third week of July, we have a Python course running. It's an introductory Python course similar to this. A lot of it is based on data eight, except the person who's going to run it is, uh, has, um, what can I say, has uh, converted it to, to South African data, et cetera. Um, and so if, and it's a free course. It'll be a week uh, long course. Uh, no certificates involved. I think that's just difficult. If you want to register for it, we haven't advertised it yet. There will be a registration process. You can check our uh, website, keep checking on, on it for the next uh, half, uh, uh, next two, three weeks, and we'll have it there. And there, there are a thousand places. So we are hoping to fill up the thousand places. We hope there'll be more demand than thousand, but yeah, we hope to at least get thousand students. Fantastic, thank nice you. And, uh, and Kanchu, if you share the, the, the advert with me when you have it, we will be more than happy to share it with all the participants of this course. Cool. And many more. And, and, and I also <laughs> want to say, you know, thanks for all the participants for coming and participating in with questions, as well as you, Francesco, for organizing it. And Ilya, I would not have been able to answer many of those questions without your help, without your Python knowledge. <laughs> No, thank you very much, Kancho, and uh, thank you, Ilya, for being with us also the whole the, the whole month. And like for the other lectures, we will post them uh, on uh, on the YouTube channels. The previous three lectures are already there, and I don't know if uh, I, I saw there was a lot of interest in your uh, Monty Hall problem. If you would like to share the the file of the code, we could add it to the website as well, so people can download it from there and and, and try to reconstruct it. Okay. If you are happy to do so, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Sure. Then, uh, uh, tomorrow we will send out the announcement of another exciting mini school that will start uh, next week on the first Tuesday of of, of June. So please um, check your inbox and, and and join us again next week for some other interesting topics. So Kanchu, again, thank you very much. Uh, sure. It was really great, and uh, I, I'm sure that many people profited from it. And, uh, and maybe in some later stage, we will do an advanced Python course. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find somebody else for that. <laughs> I'm definitely not an expert. <laughs> maybe we ask Ilya. Yeah. Ilya, there you go. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thank you for the rest of the day. Bye and bye -bye. stay safe. Bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye.